Hey yo, how we doing, guys? We're gonna be talking about we're gonna be talking about information. We're gonna be talking about uh, breath work, cold exposure, all kinds of stuff. Um, but hey, I'm a little early. I'm actually a little bit early today. It's actually kind of funny uh, the way <laughs> the way these work. What happens is it's kind of like a little bit like a like a uh, like a Mr. Rogers neighborhood. I come home from being an English professor all day. I change clothes. I'm all comfy, and uh, and and I'm, I, I just felt like playing a little music. I'm going to play a song, and then we'll get started. Super chats are up and available. If you want to ask any questions, I'm open to it. But I've been getting myself demonetized for all of my, uh, well, at least my videos have gotten demonetized because I play cover songs a lot of times. I think here's a cover song. I, I could play my own song sometimes, but you know when when I play my own songs or. I always feel like I'm pushing it on somebody. I'm like, no, man, tell me how genius this song is. <laughs> Happy Friday, guys. Happy Friday, guys. Good to have you here. Oh, man. Cheers from Sweden. Cheers from Indiana, my friend. Good to have you here, Papa Geek. Uh, I see that I got an email from you. I haven't checked your email just yet. I will take a look at that in just a minute. But I, I tell you what, I, uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to today because I think, you're gonna, I think we're going to have a good conversation today. But first... It was Labor Day on Monday, and here's a good song for Labor Day as we kind of all congregate and get started. So at, throw your ideas up there for things that we're going to talk about. We're definitely going to talk about information. I, I had a really good conversation with my favorite neuroscientist today, or actually it was yesterday we had a really good conversation. I, I want to share some of what we talked about with you guys, but uh, Super Chat's available. We'll get started in just a minute. Uh, we, got, we got a lot of Swiss here. Oh, okay. We got a Swiss. We got Swedes. Uh, M. Peter, happy Friday to you, brother. Moose Mans, happy Friday. Check in. Where are we all from? Well, some people say a man's made out of mud. The poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Well, say muscle and blood, skin and bone. A mind that's weak and a back that's strong. You know, 16 times. What do you get? No day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't call me because I can't go out sold to the company store, uh-huh. <laughs> Well, sorry for getting that mixed up. <laughs> well, I was born one morning in the drizzling rain. Fighting in trouble is my middle name. Born in the cane by an old mama line. Ain't no hot so woman made me walk the line. You load 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't call me because I, I can't go out. Hold my soul to the company store. Got Germany in the house. Awesome. North Woods. I have just been in the mood to play guitar, so I'm just going to jam one more, one more verse, and then we'll get down to business, to the business of getting down. Well... Well, I was born one morning when the sun didn't shine. I picked up my shovel and I went to the mine. I load 16 tons, number nine coal. And the poor man said, now, well, bless my soul. Well, 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't call me because I can't go. I hold my soul to the company store. Uh-huh. 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 Happy Friday, everybody. We've got a lot of cool things to talk about. Um, I had a really good conversation with my favorite neuroscientist, Dr. Otto Musick. If you've read my book, if you've read my book, you're familiar with uh, the fact that I've, I've been very, priv very privileged to be able to work with the man. Uh, he, he did. He was one of the researchers that's done research on Wim Hof. Actually, I think we're actually going to be doing some research together uh, with Wim Hof uh, next year, hopefully. So uh, I'll let you know how that works out. Um, got a lot of good people here. Oh my God. All, all my favorite names are popping up. So it's good to see you guys. What's up, Merrick? Detroit 470. Good to see you, Eric. Nice to have you here, my friend Vincent. Hey, awesome. I'm so glad you liked the book. Uh, so yeah, so it, my book has been out almost a full year now and sold thousands of copies around the world. And I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful um, that it's, 
helping. <laughs> and this is one of those things for, for you guys, you know, um, if some of you guys might've written a book, maybe you have thoughts and, 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 you know, it's one of those things with the reason why I wrote the book was literally because I was like, you know what, this book needs to be written. <laughs> you know, I I'm an English professor, right? So I, I just mentioned that I, I came home on Fridays, my last class that I teach at the college uh, you know, it gets out about two o'clock. So I, I rush home. I don't live too far away from the college and I change my clothes. Sometimes I, I'm, I'm tempted to, to do one of these just in my regular professor garb. I don't know if you'd rec well, I mean, it's, it's just not as comfortable. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm all in comfy clothes now, but, uh, but anyway, you know, and, uh, it's, it's so nice to see you guys here. And, uh, so, so, so good to see you guys, but you know, um, I always wanted to write a book and I've got all these other books and screenplays and things like that that I've written and um, th there just wasn't a need. <laughs> there wasn't a need for the, those other ones. There was a need for, hey, listen, I, I understand this thing really well and I want to share it with other people in a way that's understandable. So, hey, yeah, if you, uh, thank you guys so much for the kind comments uh, about my book. And um, if you haven't picked one up, Make sure to pick one up, uh, go to Amazon or go to my website, jessecoomer.com. And it's an audible. And I, you know, I kind of regret not doing the audible with my own voice, but it just wasn't, it wasn't happening guys. I, I, I tried, but audible is really picky about, um, the quality of, uh, of the recording. So it just wasn't working for me. So, Hey, all good. I got a really cool guy to, uh, to do the voiceovers. And uh, if you have the audiobook, it, it ha I have a little bonus in there. I think, honestly, it's one of those books, it's kind of hard to do this. Uh, it's harder to do the book. It, it was hard to do it in audible form because if, you, if you've got the paperback or the ebook e version, there's tables and charts and pictures. And I can't really do that very well in an audiobook. So I was like, well, I'll at least at least give some, uh, like, if you get the audiobook, you, you at least get, I, I do some guided breathwork sessions. So, so, you know, there's, it's kind of nice. You can get both and, and, and get something out of one or the other. Also, if you have one of these books, um, I, I'm, I'm very happy to announce that the next cohort of the six week breath mastery school is coming up. The next cohort starts October 7th. And I got to say, this one is going to be the best one yet. Um, I'm really excited about this. And there's some things going on behind the scenes, guys. I got to tell you, there's things going on behind the scenes. Um, for those of you, some of you guys have reached out to me uh, and you would like to become a certified breath worker. Um, I got to say, there's some really cool things that are happening behind the scenes. I can't say what they are right now. But um, for anybody who takes the course, eventually you're going to get an email to invite you to apply to um, my, my uh, breathwork certification program. And, um, and there, there's a whole curriculum involved, but I, I, I can't really say a whole lot right now, but it's, there's stuff in the certification that, it, or at least that's very likely to be in the certification that is going to kind of blow your mind. And so, um, more on that soon. Also, if you're in the Patreon club tomorrow morning, so Saturday morning, or it's morning in the Midwest at 10 AM, we're going to do our group breathwork session. So in the Patreon club, let me know what, you, what kind of breathwork you'd like to do. Um, I'm thinking we may go old school and do, uh, and, and hit some, one of the, maybe one of the, um, the, the, the classics, you know, one of our, our group favorites, the, if you're not in the, the Patreon club, it is only $5 to join. It's a lot of fun and you get a huge discount um, on the six-week breath mastery course. You get a huge, basically, insight on breath work and, and how a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff. And basically, for those of you guys who are in the Patreon club, I am I am doing experiments on you. <laughs> okay, not not bad experience, experiments. Basically, I am um, I'm doing... Uh, I, basically, whatever it is that I'm studying, whatever wh the, the areas of breath work that I'm researching, oftentimes I'll throw that in to the monthly sessions. So every month on my Patreon, on the, on the Patreon Club, on the Breath Mat, on the Breath Club, um, I always add generally two guided sessions. For those 
those of you who are not interested in joining Patreon Club, we're going to get to the, the, the other stuff here in just a minute. Hang with me for just a minute because I, I'm just kind of describing right now. But basically, uh, every month, if you're in the Patreon Club, you get two guided breathwork sessions that are pre-recorded. And we have, um, you know, last week, or I, I forget it was last week or the week before, I had to, I, I, I talked about how one of one of my clients, he was also in the Patreon club. He did music for me. He had uh, brain aneurysm and died. And it's in it. I mean, it hit me really hard and and thanks to everybody that sent out well wishes. And for everybody that was on that live, it was really actually very therapeutic for me to, to just at least talk about life and death. And, and, and it really, really helped me. And I hope, hopefully it helped everybody else kind of, you know, Hey, maybe we can take a minute to think about mortality and, and, um, just how grateful we should be for this breath. <sighs> just take a breath. Just take a breath right now and just say, I am so grateful for this breath. I am alive enough to, to breathe it. I mean, it, they're, they're really, we should celebrate these things more often. Um, but anyway, we lost a good friend, uh, Jonathan. Uh, we lost him uh, recently and uh, still weighing on my heart. But I will say there is also some really good news. Um, in the Patreon breath club, uh, one of our members is pregnant. And so she's going, she asked me, Hey, um, are there any breathing techniques that can help, uh, as I am, uh, going through this pregnancy to, to keep me healthy and happy and keep the little baby going. So it, uh, it was really great that, that, that she reached out and things are going really well there. But really the, the question of the day is ultimately, you know, we get a lot of information, um, and, you know, there's constant uh, a bombardment of information from every direction. And this is something that I talked to my university students about. And it's something that I've been, actually, I recently had a conversation with Dr. Otto Musik, uh, the neuroscientist. And, you know, I love talking to Dr. Otto Musik. And, and when you talk to, to neuroscientists, at least when, when I talk to neuroscientists, um, you know, a good 50% of what they say is really heady, heady stuff. I mean, in the most, I guess, pun intended way. Right. But they're, they're going through a lot of terminology really quickly, oftentimes. And, um, and so we, you know, with Dr. Autumn Musick, a lot of times we talk about consciousness, does free will exist? I mean, we get into some pretty good conversations and it's interesting. Different neuroscientists have different opinions on, on what consciousness is and whether or not we have uh, free will. And so it's it's a lot of fun getting to talk to neuroscientists about this. But we were talking about, I mean, the way the world is. And and I don't think it's any secret that that, that things are a little crazy right now. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we have a world that if you, it, I, have you guys seen Idiocracy, right? You, I'm sure you've seen it. And I, I'm not necessarily saying that we're living in idiocracy. I'm just saying this, this is a movie where they took the most average person uh, ever and then they froze him and he woke up, you know, hundreds of years in the future. And I almost feel sometimes like that happened to me, you know, or it's happening to us. It just, it's been maybe just the past two or three years. Now there was rumblings. I, I'm not going to say that this is this, you know, this state of, of so much arguing and so much, bombardment of information is new or it's just sudden. But I, I would say that it definitely kicked up a notch uh, in in the past, you know, a couple of years. And it's kind of like, have you ever, there's, a, there's an old saying about going bankrupt and go, they say going bankrupt is something that happens. Um, it happens over time and suddenly. Right. So, so it, it's, it's something that happens both ways. It's, it, it does happen suddenly, suddenly you're like, Whoa, what's, but over time it kind of builds up. And so it's a, um, it's, it's a, it's a crazy place. It's, it's a, it's still a wonderful time to be alive. And, and I'm very thankful for every breath I'm taking, but, but it is a confusing time. And I think oftentimes a lot of my clients are talking to me and what I'm getting more and more of these days, um, is, a lot of just generalized anxiety. So the, um, you know, and, and I think I, maybe you can relate to this. So it's a case of, there's a lot of the, a lot of decisions that we're not used to having to make, and, or at least we don't, we never had to make them in such quantity and so constantly. So for instance, 
you know, we've got this, um, this, this, you know, the, the, the big virus and stuff going around. Right. And so more and more, you know, over the past two years, we've all had to think about issues of public health more often. Um, we've had to think of, uh, issues of, uh, like kind of issues of life or death. You know, do, I, uh, a good friend of mine is a cancer survivor and he has basically no immune system. And so, um, it, you know, if I want to go visit him, he, you know, it's one of those things where I want to make sure I'm not taking accidentally. I mean, even a common cold over there, right. I, I want to make sure that, um, you know, we, we want to make good decisions, right. And so we're, we're constantly thinking about these decisions that we're making and, and it could be life or death for me or for someone else, or it could, if nothing else, like for instance, it could be two weeks of hell or, or whatever. And then in addition to that, you know, it could also be the, um, how we talk to other people and what you will bring up in, in, in conversations, the things you won't bring up in conversations. Um, you don't want to get, uh, people angry at you and you're, you're just trying to make it and it can bring an enormous amount of anxiety and stress on us. And we're sitting there, we're, we're trying to go through life. We're trying to also do, you know, the other things that we naturally want to do, which you're naturally going to have some stress and anxiety in life. You know, there was already plenty of stress and anxiety to go around before this all started. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, depression was still a thing. Anxiety was still a thing. I mean, people ha still had these things before everything like this happened, but then, but then, you know, it kind of exacerbated. And when we get into this state where we have constant information, right? So many decisions we have to make so many opinions and, and things like that. What we tend to have happen is we talk about an information overload. But what I want to talk about today is information and how we look at it, because this is something that, that the human brain is designed to crave. We are designed to crave information and it's a lot like food, right? So, so our physiology and Hey, I'm not trying to plug the book, but Hey, you know, if you've read my book, you know, all about, I talk a lot about how our physiology works against us oftentimes. It, it was, it was, it, it, for the longest amount of human history, we're talking like tens of thousands of years, human biology was perfectly attuned to our environment, right? Because it was never going to, you know, generally we, it was a prop. The biggest problem was starvation, <laughs> right? Most of the time, a human being was trying not to die. That was like a full-time job. That, that was, it was like, well, what do you do for a living? Uh, I, well, uh, I, I'm trying not to die, <laughs> right? And so that was literally your job as a human being was literally just, I'm trying not to die. And that meant your physiology needed to help guide you through. And so, your, you know, we talk about the autonomic nervous system and, and you've heard me talk about that. But you also have other drives, and these are drives that we still have to this day. They still survive in our in our physiology, in our psychology. We have the desire to ingest, um, you know, simple sugars. We have the, the desire to, to ingest salts. We have the desire for fats. We have the desire for things that, to us, they taste good, right? We have our our, our senses will tell us this tastes good, and that there's a reason for that. It is because of survival, and you know it's. It's this interesting thing where, um, you know, at one time, you know, w for instance, you saw an apple in a tree or you saw some kind of a banana or whatever, you ate that. It's like, there is food. Give me the food. I'm going to eat that because you don't know when you're going to see the next thing uh, pop up again, right? And so it, it, there was no real problem like we have today. Today, we have solved the calorie problem, right? I mean, the last time I checked, actually, I'm about to become certified. I, I'm, I'm about to take my exams uh, for nutrition. So I, I'm about to have that certification as a nutrition coach because I'm constantly trying to learn new things, right? So I'm, but I, one of the things I've been learning is that we're almost pretty much the globe, um, especially in Western countries. We're, we're looking at, we're almost 50% obese in, in the Westernized world, 50%. We have solved the calorie problem, right? The calorie problem is not, it's a different kind of problem now. And the, the thing is, our, 
our theology has a really hard time distinguishing really what should we eat that's good for us, right? What is actually something that will lead to higher health and higher uh, performance and things like that. And, and oftentimes, and we have to really think this through because a Twinkie, something that has very low value, so low food value um, to our senses, right? To, to the, like basically our, our, our programming, it is, it's indistinguishable from something that is high quality. In fact, it may press the right buttons to make us want to eat it rather than broccoli, right? Or, or something that is, that is something that will lead to, to greater amount of health. So not only do we have more calories than we need, we have access to all these calories, but we have access to a lot of junk calories, calories that, that they, 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 they ultimately cause us to be less healthy, even though eating, I mean, eating in itself is required for life, right? You have to eat in order to be able to survive. But if you, but now that we have all out of this access, we have, I mean, you go to a grocery store in, in a westernized country. I mean, there is so much food there. Our, our natural programming that all this, this natural human programming, we look around <laughs> and I mean, it, it really is overload. I mean, you, there's a common uh, advice that you'll, you'll get, don't go to the grocery store hungry. You've heard this advice. And it's, it's simply because it's in, it's really hard to, to resist. And oh my God, there's so much, I'm sure there's an enormous amount of good comments over here, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not reading them just yet. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm on, I'm on a tear, man. <laughs> but ultimately, and I'll, I'll get to these comments here in just a second or, or questions or any of this. I'm sure they're awesome. This, this is an awesome audience. And I, again, I just want to, I'm going to raise a glass. This is just water. It's Friday. It should be, it should be. What, what do you drink on a Friday? Do you guys, are you, are you guys going to have a beer or, 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 or water? I mean, I'm drinking filtered water, not trying to make myself virtuous by saying that, Ooh, I'm drinking filtered water. Hmm, yes. But I'm just saying that's what this is. Hey, Skull. To my to my Viking friends, they need to come out with another season of Vikings, right? Am I right? I I, I need I need more Vikings. You you're drinking plantation rum, Papa Geek. You know now. See, my wife is Puerto Rican, and so when I married my wife, we went to Puerto Rico um, for part of our honeymoon, and I learned all about rum from her family. And oh wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> to be Thomas is on the wagon. Well, hey, man, stay on the wagon. Stay healthy. I don't, I'm not going to have any alcohol tonight because I, I'll go in, in spurts where I'll have, you know, a few beers or this, that. But what I've noticed is that it, it interrupts my sleep and I, I just, I'll get, I'll get tired of it after a while. I'm kind of tired of it. So I'm, I'm just going to have a little H2O. But hey, enjoy that rum, my friend. Um, but anyway, I was talking about, I was talking about how food and information are kind of ultimately the same thing because we are, our, our, our human structure, right? Our, the, the, the human form, we understand that we have to eat in order to survive and we need calories in order to survive. And intellectually, we understand that the world we live in now is not the world that human beings originally inhabited for tens of thousands of years. We understand intellectually that, Hey, I'm in a, I'm in a house and I, I only need about 2000 calories in a day, depending on your, you know, your physiology, but all of these calories exist. And it's very difficult for our, for us to differentiate from quality calories and not quality calories. We have to use our brains for that. The built-in mechanisms that take in information, they're going to go for generally the macronutrients that used to be associated with high density uh, micronutrients, for instance, sugars, you know, we actually, even if you couldn't taste, right? So even if you lose your ability to taste, there's a, there's a, the, the no dose ganglion uh, will still make you prefer something with carbohydrates or sugars in it. Uh, there, so we have more than just the, the, the way it tastes reinforcing our desire 
for sugars. Well, it's the same way with information. You have to understand our species, for the longest amount of time, information was just as scarce as food, if not more scarce, right? Information itself. And so we need information to survive. And this is, you know, we, we understand this. Like if we look at our ancient ancestors, just not even that ancient, but, but pretty ancient, right? With, for instance, Stonehenge or all these different monuments that would track the solstice or that would track the different uh, times to harvest and to plant. We understood that that information will make you powerful, right? And will ultimately allow your tribe to survive. Information as far as where the game is headed. Information as far as what kind of plant you should eat. What kind of plant will can you use as medicine? What kind of, you know, how, how these things. Information has always been the, the I you know, that's what got us to this point in, 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 in human uh, the human timeline is okay. If we can u- leverage information, we can do amazing things. And we've got this amazing brain, this, this neocortex, that's just like full of awesomeness. You know, it's got more, um, there's more, uh, nerve endings in your, your brain than there are stars in the, the observable universe. It's just, and of course at the same time, right, you've lost your keys in the last week, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I mean, there are limitations, but ultimately it is, it, it is this thing where we are, we, our brains seek information in the same way that our physiology seeks, um, calories. And it has a very difficult time differentiating quality information from junk information and we just look for information so because any kind of information might be the kind of information that's going to help us survive in the world and and possibly uh you know make it so that we can reproduce and make it so that we can find a mate and and maybe uh you know plant our crops at the right time or whatever it is information is going to further our survival probability right and so we have this drive to gather information and the problem is We've done with information what we did with food, (laughs) which again is not the end. It's not the worst thing in the world, right? Because what we've done with food is we've eliminated for a lot of us, right? Not the whole world. And this is sad that it's not eliminated for the whole world, but for in the Western world, at least we've eliminated starvation. Like you don't see people just dying because they can't maintain caloric intake right but what we've done is we've we've filled our grocery stores with junk and now we're filling our brains with junk too so because because we our brains seek information and so oftentimes we're not necessarily going to seek quality information we're just going to seek whatever information we can find right whatever is the easiest and and I think we're all guilty of this I know I am I'm I'm certainly guilty of this um, you know, I'll look at a headline rather than read the article or, uh, or who knows where I'm getting my, my information from, or not to mention, I'm not willing to pay for information. Yeah. You know, I expect it all to be free, you know? And it's like, well, how quality of information are you going to get if, if, if it's free, you know? And, and whenever, like, for instance, that kind of information is attached to advertising, right? Generally, if it's free, there's still some kind of a mechanism that, people need to get paid. So they're, they're going to, there's going to be some kind of advertising or some kind of a thing that's connected to that information. And therefore that information is very suspect. Why is that suspect? Because the information, if it's free and the way that they're making that information available is by way of advertising, you have to understand they're going to skew that information in a way that makes you want to click on it or that makes you want to ingest it, right? The same way they do with potato chips. Let's put so much sodium and and carbs and and just junk on it so that people will continue to come back. So it's it's this information issue and it causes us to go crazy, (laughs) right? It causes us to go crazy. It causes us to fight with our neighbor. It causes us to feel morally and intellectually superior to other people Whenever we're like, well, my, I found this information out and it's, 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 this is, in my opinion, 
kind of the foundation of some of the problems we're seeing in society. So, and, and this also causes us because there's so much information, it causes us to lose sleep. It causes us to be anxious, nervous, fearful, and seeking out, trying to, you know, fight and, and use information as weapons and, and all this stuff, rather than looking at our fellow humans here as family, as we've discussed on this channel, right before, rather than looking at our fellow humans, it's like, I'm just trying to figure this stuff out too, <laughs> right? <laughs> because I, I think if a person believes they have a 100% grasp of reality, you have to, I, I think that's probably the acme of foolishness to say, I know exactly 100% what reality is um, without having any kind of doubt or any kind of humility to say, I could be mistaken, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I, it, I think those times are very rare, at least. I, I know that when it comes to, to having access to absolute truth, right? And, and this is one of those philosophical type of questions, to have access to absolute truth, oftentimes it comes through the through the through an experience or through some kind of a knowing that that we can uh, that we we can access sometimes, but not always. Um, and I think sometimes it's very difficult to come to an absolute absolute understanding, even if we have data, even if we have reliable data, we still have to interpret that data. So, so I think a, a certain degree of humility is important. And I think it's important to understand that oftentimes we fill ourselves with a bunch of junk information and then we, it ends up making us anxious and crazy because junk information is like junk food, right? Um, rather, you know, the junk food is going to be, it'll give you high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, you know, all kinds of, you know, eat, eat, rot your teeth out and all these things. Junk information makes you paranoid uh, makes you uh, hate other people, makes you not like this or that person or, or this group or that group. Um, and, and it keeps you clicking, right? But it's junk. It's just really not, it's, it's kind of garbage information that we, we love to ingest, just like we love to ingest potato chips. Not saying that I never eat potato chips. I'll occasionally eat potato chips. Oh my gosh. So let's see here. Uh, there's some good comments here and, uh, Hey, kombucha moose bands. Yeah. I, I have been drinking kombucha for a long time. Um, I'm all out. Can you, moose bands, can you send me some kombucha real, real quick? <laughs> can you email me some kombucha? I, I could really use a little kombucha. I'm just drinking good old quality H2O H2O. What, what movie is that? The water boy. So anyway, there's my little spiel. That's, that's a little something I wanted to kind of talk about and we can come back to that. We can talk about breath work. Uh, we can talk about anything else today, but I, I wanted to talk a little bit about information and how it does make us crazy. The other thing is we have a part in our brain that we do not share with the rest of animals. Okay. There's a part of our brain that is the default mode. It's literally the default mode part of our brain. And of course, now I'm, I'm the only reason I know all this stuff is because I'm friends with a neuroscientist and I, I, I occasionally ask him, Hey, teach me a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and he is the nicest guy in the world. And he will tell me a bunch of stuff. I'll tell you this. Also, when you're friends with a neuroscientist, be prepared for them to be like, I remember he read my book, he, uh, and academics. So when you're an academic, one of the, it's weird. One of the ways that academics actually are nice to each other is by reading each other's work and then tearing it to shreds, like saying, oh, I think you're wrong here. What about this here? Really challenging you. Academics love that. And that's one of the things where it's, you know, if you, if you don't know the game, you'd think that he, he really didn't like my book, but uh, <laughs> he kind of, he kind of, uh, he tore it up, he not, not literally tearing it up, but uh, whenever we talked about my book, he was like, oh, what about this? And what about that? It was so cool. But, uh, but anyway, that's this, this default mode of our brain. This is where uh, typically we start to ruminate and um, it ultimately, it's ultimately um, replaying parts of our lives 
that and we're trying to learn from our past mistakes so that we can predict the future so we can make better decisions in the future and this is how we ruminate and it's it's helpful and it's very good it helps us make better decisions in the future but it also <laughs> it also can drive us crazy and so one of the things we do with breath work is we interrupt that that cycle so for instance um, one of the, one of my favorite breathing techniques, and if you're a fan of the channel, you know, I talk about four, seven, eight breathing all the time, but that's because one of my favorite ones is because I like four, seven, eight. Um, I like a lot of different ones. Wim Hof method is a great one for a really powerful interrupt of the default mode of your brain. Um, that, that dopamine feedback loop, the motivational network is, is coming in and saying, we need to worry about that. But I love, I love anything that's going to interrupt that, um, but ultimately, we can only interrupt it so much. You do have to face your own problems, right? You do have to come to grips with the fact that there must be something that there's a reason why I'm ruminating. What is it that I'm ruminating about? And so we have to learn how to, to face these things courageously and, and say, okay, um, I do need to solve my problems. I, I can't rely on breath work to, to be the answer. It's a tool that I can use. So, okay, let's see here. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette, says V. Thomas. You're absolutely right. Camels, the greatest, it's really good for you. Um, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, pretty sure camels are the, the most nutritious. And do you guys remember, what's, what was his name? Uh, Dennis Leary. He had a whole uh, stand-up bit about how Marlboro Reds were full of vitamin C and uh, they're probably really good for you. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Just arriving late. Rye, we're glad you're here. Nice to have you here, my friend. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So we've got, we've got a conversation here. Uh, always, let's see. Yeah. You remember Dennis Leary. Do you remember what was Dennis Leary's, uh, song? Uh, life's going to suck when you grow up, when you grow up, when you grow up, life's going to suck when you grow up. It sucks pretty bad right now. Like it was, it was classic nineties uh, you know, kind of cynical humor, but <laughs> of course you have the CDs. Of course you have the CDs. <laughs> Papa Geek, I hope you're enjoying your plantation rum. I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see if we've got any here. Um, got any comments or questions? Uh, scientifically, we can't uh, see. Rusty, hey, nice to have you on here, Rusty. Always good. And it, guys, if you like, uh, Rusty, I don't know if you're still doing this, but Rusty, has a channel where he does a lot of like gameplay and he'll, he'll play games that make me both feel old and young at the same time old because sometimes these games look like they're from my childhood like from like a like a, the 1990s or early 2000s but then they're new games and i'm like i've never heard of this game before so watch his channel if you like video gaming um so he says scientifically we we can have too much information. The question is, will we get a pop-up telling us our internal hard drive is full? Aha. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. For that. It's Friday. Maybe I was getting a little too serious. Um, it, it's one of those things where like, for instance, today I'm teaching in my, because, because you guys, I, I, I love, I teach breath work. I teach cold exposure, heat exposure, um, you know, all different. I, I'm, I'm like later on this this month. I'm, I'm teaching the United States military breath work. I'm going to be teaching the psyops uh, how to breathe. So we're going to be doing. We're going to be. I, I, I'm hoping to make a real change in this world, and and we're we're starting to see some progress there. So uh, I teach a lot of first responders every month. I teach a uh, uh, drug rehab clinic. Um, I mean, we're, we're doing good things, guys. We're really doing good things with breath work. But, um, but it is, it is always, it is always like, I, I do also teach, um, rhetoric, rhetoric and research at the university. And so today, one of my biggest, my biggest task in my, my hope is just basically helping people learn to think critically, you know, um, whenever I teach at the university, it's, it's 18 year olds to 25 year olds and, I think, especially during those ages, the world is very black and white. And it's so much easier if the world is black and white, right? It's so much easier if it's just like this equals good, this equals bad. So I don't have to think about anything anymore. 
And ultimately, there's so much gray and there's so much more to life. Everything's a little bit more complicated. Even with breath work, I'll get a lot of questions where a person will say, you know, I'm taking this many breaths, I'm, I'm pausing for this amount, and then I'm doing this or that. Is that good? And I'm like, I'm always like, man, you know, it, it depends. Uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of, there's a, most of life, right, really comes down to, eh, it's kind of complicated. Right. Most of life, most of life comes down to most of the, at least in my experience, most of life's questions come down to, well, it depends. It depends. Um, and so, and so what I've been going over with my students at the university is, um, you know, how to, how to ingest information, how to digest information, because at that age, I, we're all very impressionable. And uh, we're often all too willing to just say, well, I guess if this is what the article says, I guess that's what's true. And I'm not saying it, maybe it is, maybe it is true, maybe it's not true. But it, we, we have to really start to think critically and understand how, um, how our thinking comes across. And there's a lot of times we, we suffer from our own um, confirmation bias, for instance, Hey, I want this to be true. So therefore I'm only going to listen to sources that, that confirm what I want to be true. And we're all, you know, every human being is guilty of that. I mean, it's just part of being a human being, but, um, but basically, you know, that's, I, I didn't mean to get too serious on you guys. I I'm enjoying these talks on Friday lately. I, I and, and I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys that, that you enjoy them too. So, um, I, I hope I'm not boring you guys, but it, it, there's there's so much there's so much that that we take in when it comes to information with our health too. Um, oftentimes we just want to say is this good or bad? For instance, carbohydrates. I think that's probably the one that it carbohydrates have gotten the bad name lately. Fat got the bad name like in the 80s and 90s. It's like fat is bad, man. Fat. You do not want to eat fat. If you eat fat, man, you get fat. If you eat fat, if you eat fat, you get fat. Or like, and now, and, and it is true that a a gram of fat has nine calories as opposed to a gram of protein or carbohydrate, which is only four calories. So, yeah, fat is far more calorically dense. But you need fat, right? Your brain and your your body, your hormones. I mean, you you have to have some fat. Um, to, to be able to, to live, um, it, they're really important. And if you, if you low on, uh, eating your fats, well, then you can put yourself in a bad place, but, but not all fat is created equal, right? So for instance, um, is it, is it saturated fat or is it unsaturated fat? Is it mono unsaturated fat? Is it poly unsaturated fat? You know, so <laughs> So it always comes down to, you can't just stop thinking. I think that's really if, you know, the, the big lesson that keeps, keeps bonking me over the head when I look out at the world and look at myself. I, and, and oftentimes it's so easy to look out and say, boy, everybody else is making dumb decisions. Boy, I'm so smart. But the reality is we're all human beings and I make dumb, I think I'm, I'm, I'm a moron all the time anyway. So <laughs> But like it always, it generally things will be more complicated than, than what we like them to be like with carbohydrates. Yeah. There are some junk carbohydrates out there, but ultimately there are times when sugar is not a bad thing. Oh my God. Did he just say there are times when sugar is not a bad thing? Well, yeah, there are some times when sugar is not a bad thing. There are some times when it is. Uh, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the amount and, and, and a lot of it has to do with the source and, you know, there's all these other things. And, and so not to mention uh, a piece of broccoli is not always the same as another piece of broccoli. One of the things that we don't un always think about, like, like, and this is one of those things where I'm very much in favor of organic everything. Uh, a lot of people ask me about diet and they'll say, okay, so what is the best diet? Or, and of course, they'll ask me that question less often than they ask me, what is the best breathing techniques? Again, if you're interested in learning all about your breath, take my six-week breath mastery course. There's a reason there's six weeks in there. But when it comes to diet, you know, uh, a lot of people want to say, well, this diet's really good. This diet sucks. 
you know, and there are, there are diets that are great for one person and they suck for another person. And it also has to do with your lifestyle, your, your, your goals, your, you know, all these things. So, um, let's, let's see here. Let's, let's take a quick look. I'm going to go down just a, a minute. I see a few questions. Anytime I see a question mark, I want to make sure I get there. Also guys, if you have questions, if you want me to change topics, the, the super chats are available and I'd be happy to answer your questions as well. I'm having it. First of all, I just want to say, and I'm going to answer some of these questions, but I have a great time. I look forward to these every week just because such great people show up and I'm not, I'm not kidding. This is not me just like saying, you guys are the best, man. No, it's seriously, I, I, I'm, I'm always excited uh, for Friday, of course, because it's Friday, but it's always, it always gives me something to look forward to. I come home. And I, I get to talk about whatever I want to talk about. And generally, uh, there's awesome people here who have s- stuff to say about it too. So let's let's go through here a little bit. And uh, I'm, I see some question marks at the end of Journey's End. How you doing, Journey's End? Glad you're here. Um, do you have any advice on what to do if, if your shower doesn't get cold enough? Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's see. I li- when I lived in New York City, my showers were perfect. Yeah. Well, you lived in New York City. That's right. Um, now I move that I moved. It's like taking showers on easy mode every day. Okay. I don't know where you live journeys in, but that's how it is here in Indiana. I live in Indiana. I'm in, I'm in the Southern part of Indiana, which is why I sound somewhat Southern. Uh, my, I have that Midwestern accent. Um, and, but you know, if, if you're from Indiana, you might be from Northern, Northern Indiana. I'm from Southern India. So, <laughs> So here's what I would recommend doing, uh, journeys. And first of all, it's going to be seasonal. It's, it's a little bit more seasonal the, the further south you go. Now, you, you can go, once you get close, the closer you get to the equator, the less seasonal it's going to be and the more warm it's going to be. But when you, like for instance, in Indiana right now, my cold showers are starting to get a little colder because the days and nights are getting a little cooler here. Um, but if you have well water, it's going to be about whatever temperature it is kind of year round, but it, most of us have municipal water. So, so you get it from the water company. In that case, you can expect your water to start getting colder about, actually it should start beginning a little bit colder between, you know, now, and it's going to get colder and colder as we get closer to the winter. And then it'll be so crazy cold. I don't know where you are, my friend, but, uh, for instance, it, it for me, um, usually about January and February, uh, it is really cold. So this is how I normally shower. So I'll I, like right now in the in the summertime, I just never use warm water because why would I want to use warm water? I just w- get in the shower and it's like it's kind of like having swimming pool water on me. You know, it's not <laughs> it's not cold. It's not hot. It's just, you know, I would say, um, and Papa Geek's going to kill me if he's on, if he's on still, uh, it's, it's going to be, I would say it's about 68 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I do not off the top of my head. I think that's like 20 degrees ish. Okay. Okay. Just because I know Papa Geek is list. There he is. There he is. I knew it. I knew it. I, I, okay. 68 degrees Fahrenheit and Celsius. 14 and a half degrees, Papa Geek. <laughs> so it's not cold. It's not It's not co- cold at all whenever I get in the shower now. So I just take a regular shower, wash everything in cold. I, I don't even vary the water temperature at all. But in the wintertime, it'll get so cold in my shower that whenever I wash my hair, I may actually turn on the warm water just so I don't get brain freeze. And then uh, uh, Papa Geek, if, if, if you didn't rib me about this, I would, I would miss it. I would miss it. But, uh, but like, yeah, in the summer, it's, in the winter time, it'll get so cold. Like it'll get down to, oh no. Oh no. Hang on. It'll get down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius. 40 degrees Fahrenheit okay. is equivalent to four point. Okay. It'll get down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about four degrees Celsius. Um, so that's real cold. That's a nice cold shower. In fact, that cold of a shower can be a greater challenge than an ice bath. 
It, and the reason for that is because it's running water. Now, it's not on your whole body. and It depends on what kind of shower head you have. But I I mean, it can be a real challenge. So in the wintertime, I'll warm when I wash my hair and beard. And then I'll get back to cold for everything else. But I always do cold a little bit all over the place just because, hey, that's I'm going to shower usually anyway. So that's that's how I do that uh, journey. Is in. Oh, he says uh, he's on municipal water. Uh, just an hour upstate. Okay. So you're still in New York, the, the state of New York, but okay. So yeah, it's going to get colder. Don't worry. It's coming during the summertime is a great time to experiment with ice bathing. So, and I love ice bathing in the summertime. And what's funny is everybody always waits till the winter time to do ice baths, but I'm always like, no dude, ice bathe in the summertime. And if you've never taken an ice bath before summertime is a great time to start ice bathing just because it's so much easier. Like it's, you get out of the ice bath and ambient temperature is helping to warm your body. So it's so much easier to ice bathe in, in the, uh, in the summertime. And that's oftentimes whenever I push myself a little harder, uh, in the ice bath, just because, Hey, why not? I know that when I get out, it's not going to be crazy hard to rewarm my body. I still might feel incredible. You know, sometimes when I push myself a little hard, I'm like, okay, if if I go back inside to the air conditioning, I may actually experience some after drop. I'm going to go ahead and mow the yard. <laughs> I'm going to do a little yard work in the garden or something. <laughs> and so you feel like you have air conditioning outside. It's I, and I don't want I don't want to paint that. I know some people are like, "Hey Jesse, you shouldn't make it you shouldn't glaze over the danger of after drop." And I'm and I don't want to do that. After drop if you've read my ebook on on, um, actually guys, I'm going to ask you a question about what you think. I'm going to ask your advice on what you think I should do about this ebook business, uh, here in a second. Um, but if you've read my ebook about cold training, you know how serious I take after drop and, and hypothermia. So, um, so be careful, but I oftentimes push myself a little harder in the summertime just because I know it's going to be easier to, um, to recover. So I have a question. Um, I've recently been talking about publishing my ebook as a paperback, uh, the ebook on cold training. And my goal was to revise it to the third edition to add a few things before I did that. It's not going to happen. I am not, I, I am working on as of right now, possibly, well, for sure, three online four it's actually going to be four online courses like i i'm working on a lot of courses right now and i'm i've got a lot of clients and i just don't have the time to work on that book right now i probably won't have the time until the summertime of next year so i've got the decision i i need to make i can either publish what i have now in a paperback or i can just wait and and eventually finish the revisions and then publish it sometime next year. If you have, you know, if you've been waiting on the paperback, I don't know. I know some people have been waiting on the paperback version to come out, um, and they're I they're reaching out to me. Hey, I remember you said September is whenever you're going to publish the paperback version of your cold training book. Is that going to come out? And I'm like, I'm sorry, I, I don't think it's going to come out. So. If you have an opinion on that, I would love to know what you think I ought to do there. Um, I, I firmly believe that my the current edition of my cold training book is, I mean, it is quite complete and, and whole. There are things that in my own mind, I would like to add to it though. Um, so I don't know. And I can always, I mean, I literally could, I could just publish it as a paperback now and then make the next edition paperback whenever I get the time to revise it. I don't know. So that's something I'm, if you have thoughts on that, please let me know. Uh, let's see here. So that was a great question. Journey's end. Thank you for, uh, thank you for that comment. Um, let's see TMI. Uh, is that too much information? Uh, problem is all the stories stories because humans tend to make decisions based off their emotions. Uh, 
and not the data. Yeah, we are emotional creatures, and this is true. Uh, there's no human being. All of us would love to believe. You know, I make all my decisions based off of every decision I make is a rational decision, right? I'm I am so smart. We all would love to believe that we're like that, but in reality, we make so much of our decisions based off emotion. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is something that oftentimes we like to pretend everything I do is logical and reasonable. And there's, you know, I, I make my decisions based off of sound reason and research and things, but in reality, it's just not the case. And, and I, I would say, you know, actually, I think V Thomas, you mentioned the whole cigarettes thing, right? I smoked cigarettes whenever I was um, a teenager. I don't know if you guys, you know, ever, you know, smoked or anything like that, but I smoked cigarettes and I knew from the beginning, I mean, this was the nineties when I was doing this, there, it was no question. Cigarettes will kill you. It gives you cancer, right? It was not like uh, we were living in the fifties or something. And I knew, Hey, that's, this is bad for me. All the data says I should not do this behavior, but it wasn't until, I mean, I was doing it out of, for emotional reasons, right? Uh, whether it was for fitting into the crew or for uh, helping me with uh, stress or whatever. And it wasn't until later on that I was, uh, that, that emotional reasons made me quit. You know, um, it was the data, some of it, but it was also that um, I didn't like smelling bad. I didn't like feeling dirty all the time. I, you know, it was, it, it was, it was like comfort reasons. We make decisions as human beings based off of three big criteria. And this is something that uh, we've learned from Aristotle. And uh, Aristotle breaks all human decisions down to three big criteria. One is logic, right? So uh, the logic that is, you know, if I have $5 and something costs $10, I cannot purchase that. Or it's the, hey, there's certain, you know, some scientific research or, um, you know, there's things like that. So logic is, is, is one of those things. The log we, we sometimes call that logos or the logical appeal. And then we also have emotions, right? So he talks about how we make a lot of decisions based off of emotions. For instance, if you've ever given to a charity, right? Um, you proud, you were making an emotional decision, right? You, you would, you, first of all, you had compassion or you felt guilty not making that donation. Um, or you've ever helped, if you've ever helped anybody, right? It's not necessarily that you're like logic dictates that I must help this person, right? <laughs> if you, I, mean, I, I don't, I assume not, but you know, and then there's, there's the other one, which they, he considers ethos, which would be, uh, based off of, um, kind of shared values. So for instance, we all agree that freedom is important, therefore make this decision, or we all agree that our health is important or our planet is important. So therefore we're, you know, uh, because of this value set, we're going to make this decision based off of my, my belief in this value. Um, or we can also, it, it, sometimes it's, it's an appeal to authority. So for instance, um, it might be one of those things where because um, going back to the cigarettes thing, because the surgeon general says I shouldn't smoke, I'm not going to smoke because I respect this person and, you know, or because Wim Hof says I should do something, I'm going to do something, even though maybe, you know, I, and, and this is not, I'm just throwing those, uh, those names out there, right? Whatever person, right. That you trust and respect because that person says, Hey, this is what I should, we should be doing. Often, sometimes we just make a decision based off of our respect and, and admiration for that person. Even if logically we may not be able to connect all the dots, we're like, well, he's a smart guy. He, he knows what he's talking about. So I'm just going to do what he says. You know, we do these things as, because we're human. But, um, but yeah, I would love to believe that I make all of my, um, I, I would love to, I, I make all of my decisions based off of, of logic and reason. But, you know, it, the reality is we're human beings. Um, and, and every moment, this is the thing about being a human being is like every moment from, you know, there's a lot of different versions of ourselves that we, can, that we are throughout the day. Even it's, it's this interesting thing about being a human being, whenever you really think about how you behave and your emotional states and how they transcend all your, uh, your experiences, like for instance, the state of your body. And this is why physical health is so important. I cannot stress this enough. Physical health is so important because literally 
everything that you experience is colored by your physical health. And like an easy, just an easy illustration is like, if you've ever had something stuck in your eye, this is, and and I, I wear contact lenses. Okay. So there's a little, little thing about me. So I wear contact lenses. And so I'm often plagued by, you know, maybe there's something in my eye or something like that. But, but I remember one time, um, you know, I, I, if you've ever been, if you ever had sand in your eye, just a little grain of sand in your eye, everything that happens that day is colored by that irritation. So, you, you know, the way you will react and behave and, and your thought processes are colored by your physical state. You know, oftentimes we think about, um, you know, what it would be like to win the lottery. Wow, wouldn't it be great to win the lottery? Awesome. Well, when we think about that eventuality, Generally, we're not thinking about, wouldn't it be great to win the lottery and have broken legs, right? We're generally thinking I'm in good health in that situation. But if you won the lottery and you had emphysema and, you know, you had pain everywhere, it certainly would be a different, you would, you and feeling good. So the way we take care of ourselves, it ultimately, it's so funny because, you know, I, I always, I always roll my eyes when people say, would you rather be, um, uh, poor and happy versus rich and sad. I mean, obviously I'd always rather be happy than sad, right? But but there is a certain degree of, you know, would you rather be young and healthy or old, you know, young and healthy and poor or old in pain and rich, right? So, or, or you know, so if you think about that, I mean, okay, wow, okay. So no matter like what the experience, our physical health is, is what, colors that experience. So it's so important. And, and I always, and people talk to me about this a lot of times because I, you know, I work in academia and they, they think of me as some kind of a health nut. And maybe I am, I, I <laughs> maybe I am, I, I do think about health quite a bit, but, um, but the, they'll, they'll talk about, you know, uh, intellectual pursuits as something that is different than a physiological pursuit. And I always, my challenge is always point to somewhere on your body where you're, nervous system is not right you can't do it your ner- you know your brain is connected to everything and and a great illustration to that is if you've ever stubbed your toe or smashed your finger i mean that's a tiny little thing but think about how fast that nerve though that things that that pain signal gets to your brain you know and think about how loud something like something as small as your little finger can be and you smash your little finger and suddenly everything stops you were having a great day <laughs> and suddenly everything stops. So, so there's a, anyway, that I, I, oh, but I digress. I digress. You are a little extreme, Jesse. Maybe I am. I don't know. I'm having fun though. I'm having fun. Let's see here. Thanks guys for sticking around. We're going to keep going. If you have a question, if you want to interrupt or, or change the topic, you can always do a super chat. Um, and I think I did have a question about the, uh, six week breath mastery course. Are you still on here? Um, let's see. I want to make sure I answer that question because, uh, that's a great question and I'm really excited about that. Ryan. Okay. Ryan had a question. Ryan Donahue had the question. Okay. So, Hey Ryan, nice to, ha- nice to have you here. So with the six week breath mastery course, what we're covering is every aspect of breathing. So in that course, um, ultimately, once you're done with the course, the goal is that you understand your your pulmonary system. You understand how it all works. Um, It is not exhaustive. And what I mean by that is I don't teach you all all the techniques, right? It's not technique focused. Techniques are great, but ultimately um, techniques in in themselves, in order for them to work, you have to know what it means for it to work. I think a lot of times, a a lot of folks will get into breath work. I know I did and be like, well, this is good for me. Um, it's, and and so is food, right? But if you eat all the food, then you're kind of working against yourself. So understanding your own physiology, understanding is this breathing technique actually doing the thing that I want it to do. And first of all, going into it saying, what do I want my breath to do for me? 
What is my breath currently doing? Because this is something that a lot of people don't understand. Every breath you take, so the breathing that you're doing right now is informing parts of your body. It's, it's literally influencing your metabolism, your blood sugar, your immune system. Every breath you take. It's not just when I sit down and do this technique and that's breathing. It's every breath you take. And also when you sit down and do this style of breathing, are you actually getting the effects that you think you're getting out of that style of breathing? And then also, <laughs> maybe you're doing the technique that you that really is in line with your physiology, but maybe your, your breathing mechanics are getting in the way of you getting the maximum results. So what I do in the six weeks, I teach you literally the foundations of all breath work. Um, and once you're through it, you can pretty much design your own breathing technique if you like. We go through, okay, I'm going to design my own breath technique because I understand what an inhale does to me. I understand what an exhale does, not just to everybody, because there are some things that are pretty much across the board, but we actually take the time and I teach you how to test it on your own physiology. So how do you even know influencing your autonomic nervous system? What, what are the, the things that you're influencing? How, how, do you, how can you even detect the changes? So what I do is I, I cover all of that and, um, and I cover how to, how to test these things. And then of course, I also teach you a lot of different schools of breath work. And instead of teaching you a specific school, I teach you the foundation of the school. So things like Buteco, Oxygen Advantage, um, XPT, um, certain forms of pranayama. I teach you super ventilation. So, so when we talk about super ventilation, I teach you about why it does what it does, what it actually is doing, what's happening in your physiology, how to maximize it. Yes. I also teach you how to get a longer breath hold. Okay. And I do teach you some, some interesting things that you may not be aware of there. Um, and we do it and we, what we do is we get together every week for six weeks and we get together for two hours and it's live just like this. And I've got a lesson plan and basically we, we, it's an in-depth focused thing. Like if you can look over here, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is from this. Is, I do a whole uh, whole two hours on your breathing physiology and how to maximize it. And what happens oftentimes is people will learn the physiology. Okay. This is where my lungs are. This is where, you know, this muscle is. And yeah, I, it's true though. Rusty, you're right. I don't teach you how to grow a beard. Maybe I should add that that's week seven, how to grow a beard. <laughs> but, but ultimately I don't just teach you, Hey, this is where all, all this stuff is. What I do is I show you, this is what it all does. This is how to work, how to use your, your, your physiology to maximize every aspect of it, how to use your physiology, um, to, to accomplish your goals. And this is one of those things where it comes back to, um, there's a lot of voices out there. It comes back to what I was talking about earlier, a lot of information. There's a lot of information out there, but it's useless if you don't know how to use it. And so that's the main focus is how to use this information. What's really going on? I teach you literally how to breathe. And then I teach you, okay, if, if this, this is, these are the things that these things do, these different schools. And then at the end, you'll be equipped with enough knowledge to be able to create your own perfect breathing practice. So what that means is, 24 seven. That's not just, I would tell you what the best technique is for this or that, right? That is, that is, that is a question that you, that won't make sense to you when you're done, right? What's the best technique for this? Because you'll understand, like I said before, with information, it's more complicated than that. And so what we do is we dive into it and I, I make it simple. I make it simple. It's very understandable. If it, for those of you guys who have taken the class before, you can attest to the fact that I'm not trying to impress you with high level vocabulary. I do make it accessible. Uh, I make it to where it's understandable. I, I don't, I'm not trying to overload you, but ultimately your life is your own life. You're not living my life. 
You're living your own life. You've got your own stressors, your own passions, desires, health goals, all these things. They're they're yours and your life will change. I've got a six-year-old son. For those of you who have kids, you if you have a kid at six years old, you will understand that there is a difference between having a child at six and having a child at six months, right? Um, and so everyone has a different goal. And so what I do is I cover all of the aspects of breathing and then you will be informed. So you'll say, okay, so my goal is I want to be able to digest my food better. I I constantly have indigestion. I need to learn how to sleep better. Uh, or maybe, maybe you're an athlete. Okay. My goal is I want to be able to run faster. I want to be able to lift weights more efficiently. Uh, I would like to not get injured quite as often. Uh, I want to be able to play with my grandchildren. I mean, there, it depends on what your goals are. And because, you know, there, there's a difference between getting a workout out of Men's Health Magazine or whatever, or like, you know, get six pack abs in six weeks or whatever. There's plenty of that information out there. Not what I cover. <laughs> what I cover in my course is this is how it works. And then we test it. There's all kinds. It's not just me talking at you. We, we, we talk about stuff. I tell you about things. Then we test it. Then we experiment. We have some, some experiential stuff. We have homework. And over six weeks, we cover a lot of great stuff. One of, one of the things that I also do offer in, in week six, I do also lead you through altered state breath work. So, um, and that's, that's something that uh, we cover as well. We, we do cover altered state. So having a psychedelic experience using breath as well. So let me just see what else I got on here. Uh, so Ryan, I, I hope that helps. And if you have any questions, Ryan, please, please feel free to, to throw those uh, questions out there. Let's see here. Rusty Gaming says, it's like the difference between being a card collector and playing the card game. That's a great point. Uh, you can collect the cards and not know anything about how the cards do, what the cards do. Absolutely. Um, uh, let's see here. I mean, one time he took off. I do sometimes take off my shirt. But it is okay. It's it's not what you're thinking. <laughs> the only reason I take off my shirt is I want there. I show you some pranayama. I, I do demonstrate pranayama. I show you some techniques to improve muscular function within your breathing mechanism and, and how how to how to become a stronger breather. And and you need to see my body for that. And it's not like I'm trying to show off or anything. I don't. You know, I keep my pants on. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, what else here? So Ryan says, uh, sounds awesome. Do you, do you know yet what dates and times the weekly sessions will be held? Yeah. Thank you for that question. So, uh, it starts on October 7th and we will be meeting every, let's see. I think it, I think that is a Thursday, October 7th. Let's see here. Yeah. Thursday, October 7th at 2 PM Eastern standard time. And we'll go from 2 p.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. Eastern. It's two-hour blocks every single time. And then if you can't make it or if you have to drop or or if, or if you just can't remember everything and you want to watch it again, you get access to the recordings and you can have that forever. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we'll meet every Thursday at, starting on October 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll, every Thursday... For six weeks, we meet um, for two hours. So that yeah, that's that's how that works. Uh, let's see. Papa Geek says the course is is it expected to be uh, practicing stuff between the weeks like homework? Yeah. So ultimately, and and most of this, I, I always ask people to come into the course as and think of it as you are in a laboratory now. I know most of you guys are going to come into it. You already have somewhat of a breathwork practice in place. And I'm not asking you to just stop doing all those things. But what I do ask is that you, you add these elements. So, so for like, and, and add to your practice over those times. So it's always, basically your experimentation is you, you my, I always ask that you you experiment with the techniques that we learned or at least experiment with the concepts that we learned. And so there's guided sessions that you'll you'll go you'll have 
and you're going to experiment with those things. And the thing is, because it's not prescriptive, and, and by that I mean because I'm not telling you you have to do this. This is this is the breath work practice that you need to have. This is the best one, man. If anybody says this is the best breath work practice, then they're they're making a broad statement that they can't possibly say because there's so much variation in our species. So what I'm saying is your goal every week is to start, is to, to add to your practice some experimentation of what we cover each week and each week accumulates. So by the end, you're practicing a lot of different things, but you've chosen your own path and you're familiar with what you could also do instead of maybe I tried this one and maybe I could try this one another week. At the end of six weeks, I'm not saying you will have your final breathwork practice. And I'll tell you this, I don't have my final breathwork practice. But what, and the reason for that is because my life changes. Every day is slightly different. And I have general, general things, and you probably will. By the end of this, you'll probably say, okay, every morning I do this. I do this before I eat, or maybe I do this before I go to bed, or I do this before I work out or after I work out. You'll have some things kind of planned out. But you got to remember, you're breathing all the rest of those times too, right? <laughs> so you're going to have tools that you can implement into your day. And the homework is, is all about experimenting with that. So that's a, that's a, great, um, a great question. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you asked that, Papa Geek. Yeah, V. Thomas, homework. And now it's not, I'm not going to grade your homework. <laughs> you know, I'm not grading anybody's homework. But there is an expectation that if you're, at, if you're coming into this class, don't, it, this is not just like, here's some techniques to help you calm down. That is not what, this is an intensive. This is, this is if you're really ready to take your breath practice seriously and you're sick and tired of all this junk information out there because there's a lot of great information out there too. But a lot of it's junk mixed in with that. It's just like a grocery store, right? Because you can go to the grocery store and get a fantastic diet of everything that your body needs. And maybe your body needs different things on different days because it has different demands depending on what you're doing. Oh my God, right? That's so true. But there's also a lot of information out there with breath. And uh, you know, there's, there's so much junk information out there. So what we do is I teach you what I have distilled over all these years and what I continue to learn. I'm still learning more about breath. And so every class, every cohort that I teach gets a little bit more than the last one. And whenever you, and, and just so you know, and you're like, well, wait a minute, maybe I need to take the last one he ever does, right? <laughs> I don't know when that's going to be, but I do also offer whenever you finish one, I generally give you a discount if you ever want to take it again, uh, because a huge discount, because I want to you at least have the option to come back and, and experience it again. And a lot of people do. I think Eric mentioned this will be his third, his third time to do it. And the reason why it, people do it multiple times is not because they didn't learn anything, right? Why, <laughs> right? People aren't like, you know what? This doesn't teach me anything. I better take it again. <laughs> people take it multiple times because this is a, it's a live virtual classroom experience because you, you're, it's a lot like, it's similar. We use it. We use a different, um, an app called uh, AirMeet. I had something in my eye. Uh, we use an app called AirMeet. So it's a, it's a kind of a virtual conference uh, software that we're using. But as you ask questions, the classroom goes to what, what you have questions about. Obviously, the expectation is that you're staying on topic, right? I don't want you to come in and, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're talking about CO2 tolerance training or whatever. And you're like, uh, whenever I do Wim Hof method uh, and I get into an ice bath, it's like, no, we're not talking about ice baths in the breath mastery club, right? So, <laughs> but um, when it comes to breath mastery, it is it is literally, there's nothing else out there like it that I know of. And so I'm really proud of it. It's some of my best work. So thank you for that. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, v Thomas, a lab, uh, we're already largely being experimented on. Well, yeah, you, you need to experiment on yourself. You, you are your own in one or in equals one. You are your own best laboratory. So definitely, uh, let's see. Rusty says, 
Uh, I got to be honest, the info is pretty amazing. Thank you, brother. Uh, you'll, you'll never see breath work the same. It's information you can take throughout the rest of your life. Not years. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's ultimately, if you're looking to jump ahead many years, <laughs> um, into breath practice, um, and, and solidify your foundations and solidify your understanding. That is, that is, that is what the whole point of it is. So, so, Hey, I invite everybody to do it. If you have a copy of my book, you can get $25 off, uh, your entry. Uh, and then, you know what, you know what I think I may do, here's what I'm going to do guys. I'm going to, if you stick around for just a second, I'm going to make you, I'm going to give you a coupon code that if you use it this weekend, you get 10% off. Hang on just a second. I'm going to make the coupon code right now. And, uh, if you, yeah, so this, this, this is one of those things where you're going to need to sign up by um by sunday at midnight but let's see what should we call it what should we make this is going to be the coupon code is um let's see youtube we'll just call it the youtube coupon code and uh let's see the coupon code is going to be uh ytb 10 that way you get your 10% off. I'm going to put it in the description down at the bottom. You're going to get 10% off if you sign up um, by this Sunday. And let me make sure this works. So there it is. Okay, done. It is published. It is good to go. And if you use, oh, it should be beard. You're absolutely right. Uh, maybe I'll make another one. <laughs> no, but for right now, YTB10 is the code that will get you 10% off as long as you use it this weekend. So that means today is uh, September 10th. So as long as you use it before midnight on September 12th, you will get 10% off of the entry into the course. Now, if you want a huge, huge discount, even bigger than 10% off, join the Patreon Breath Club. That is an enormous, enormous discount. Uh, but hey, this is also an amazing discount, ten percent off, and it will be uh, it's it's live as as we're going right now. So ten percent off uh, on the breath mastery course. Tell your friends if, especially if you know somebody who's getting into breath work, and it's just like, especially if you're confused. There's so much, so many voices out there. There's a lot of really great voices, but there's a lot of you know, just going back to the earlier theme of the, the talk today, there's a lot of information that's just kind of junk information. So uh, let's see, is there a cap of how many participants I can take? Uh, no, because this is an online class, uh, typically um, I haven't had to cap it yet, but I, I once I see it starting to get close to 100 people, I probably will cap it at 100 just so that I can take your questions and and so that we, you know, it doesn't get too out of hand. Um, but here's the thing, once it starts, so once the cohort starts, nobody else is allowed into that cohort. This is not something you come in and out of. Uh, and the reason for that is because we have a virtual conference center. It's kind of cool. We have virtual tables and you can talk to people that are in the class, share stories. You don't have to, if you, if you don't really like people that much, that's fine too. Uh, you can just be there to learn and, and that's fine too. But Ultimately, um, ultimately, it is a uh, an opportunity to be with a group as you move through the six weeks. So, okay, man, I'm getting so many I'm getting so many requests for beard. Maybe I'll I'll have to throw that in there here. I don't know. Maybe it'll be a surprise, like like a, like an Easter egg. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> we'll see. C, hey C, says what makes the breathing method effective. Um, yeah, so, so maybe you just, uh, logged in. Uh, so, so, so if you would like to learn about all the aspects of, of breath work, how everything works and what makes breath work a tool that you can use for your own personal goals to get what you want out of breath work, because there is no one type of breath work. 
Uh, there's so many types of breath work and you're always breathing. Every breath you take influences so much of your physiology. This breath right now is influencing your metabolism, your blood sugar, your adrenal levels, everything. You are, you are literally always practicing breath. And so, and there's an enormous amount of information that once you understand about how your own physiology works, you can start to make your own particular breathing practice. Um, so, uh, let's see here. So, uh, any tips for Coke exposure? Uh, he's already having a great weekend, eh? Ah, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Um, my shower is too warm and my bathtub is too small. Uh, hey man, I understand you there. So you're practicing Wim Hof method, I guess. So, so yeah, if you're practicing Wim Hof method, you're going to want to, uh, get some more ice, man, get some ice or get a, get a tub. Um, there is, uh, you know, maybe I should do a recommend, should I do a video on like recommending ice tubs? Uh, maybe I'll do that. Um, I use a horse trough myself, but I've used pop-up, uh, tubs before and, uh, um, all those other things. So, so, but don't do cocaine, man. Just say no. <laughs> we're, we're poking fun. Typos are typos are internet fun a lot of times. So anyway, guys, it's been a, a great uh, Friday talk. I appreciate you guys being here and you know, I, I wish you all the best. Remember that when it comes to information, it is important to vet the information. It's just like food. It is literally what you feed your brain. And so uh, remember that. And, and if you're looking for the, to have good quality information, that is, that is my finest goal, the highest goal that I have for the six week breath mastery course. So if you use promo code YTB10, you can get 10% off of the, uh, course. You'll just need to go to, uh, jessecoomer.com and find the courses. I'll put all that information after this gets done processing in the box below guys have a great weekend. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. And uh, of course, don't forget to go out there and be kind to one another. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend.